team, we're going to be showing you a live shot from our Jerusalem camera that's there at our Daystar facility there, and I'm looking forward to that. And we have with us uh, all the way from Africa by way of Pennsylvania, Sam Childers, who has been dubbed the Machine Gun Preacher. So please join Joni and me as we welcome Sam Childers to Celebration. Sam, Great God job. bless you. All right. And uh, he's written a book, Joni, entitled Another Man's <laughs> War. And it's a hardback book, and we'll put up the information. The, the true story of one man's battle to save children in the Sudan. And I think most everybody is at least somewhat aware of uh, the terrible situation happening in the Sudan. Sudan is run by a dictator, but then there's a part of Sudan that's kind of like no man's land, where it's just anarchy, chaos, nobody's really in control. There, it's civil war, there's rebels. Uh, it is just a deplorable situation. Okay, so Sam, I guess the first question is, is and by the way, there is a movie being made about your life. Do you know when that's going to be coming out? Uh, it's already shot. It's in editing right now. So they're saying September, October next year. All right. So why <laughs> in the world? Do, I mean, did Joni and I need to be in fear of our lives? <laughs> You're called the machine gun preacher. Is that because you preach no. real fast like a machine gun or you have a machine gun or you use I, a machine I gun? Have, What's I, the deal on that? I have many machine guns and I have many guns. I, I normally carry a gun all the time. I'm I'm, Look, I'm fully licensed right for carrying a gun. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, I've had I'm a lot sure of training. I'm sure that's got to be a Harley, right? Yeah, I, I have a lot of Harleys. I actually build motorcycles, too. Okay. Yeah, so God has been good. You know, they say that he'll give you your heart's desires, but first you must follow him. Yes. And I followed him, and I gave everything up for many, many years, many years. But I always had a dream of building motorcycles, so I got to work some with Jesse James, and stuff a couple years ago, and now I build my own <coughs> motorcycle called uh, MGP Rat Bikes. That's great. Wow. Okay. So why do you carry m machine guns? Uh, I've been in Sudan working for 14 years, and uh, I work in the war zone area. Uh, I believe that when God took me into Sudan, uh, I seen a body of a small child that stepped on a landmine. I knew I could Aww. do something. And James chapter 4, verse 17 says, if you know you should do something and then not do it, you have sinned. I knew I could do something mainly because of my past. I was a drug dealer. I worked as a shotgunner for many years. I was a hired gun. And, so you uh, were like an enforcer. Uh, so yeah, in other words, when people, of, when there'd be a failed drug deal or somebody didn't pay, you were hired to, to be the muscle man to make them pay. Is that I, kind of I've what I've done happened? a lot of bad things. And uh, I've always said that if God can use me, imagine what he can do in your life. So before we get you into Africa, we've got to get you saved. So right now you're going around beating up people, shooting people, <laughs> whatever. So how I did you I never shot get... anyone that didn't need to be shot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I bet they might disagree, but that's probably true. So Sam... How, so you're in this, how long were, did you live that kind of lifestyle? Uh, of until 1992, June of 1992. And so in 92, you were how old? In June of 1992, I went to an old-fashioned camp meeting at Assembly of God Church, and uh, God moved on me. And, and it's really crazy what happened that night. Uh, uh, I sat in the back row and uh, ended up making a long story short. The preacher come back to me, and I gave my heart to the Lord in that back row. Went back the next night because I wanted more of what I got in the back row. But I figured if you can get that in the back row, you can get more in the front. Yeah. yeah. So I went right. straight to the front row, and uh, he gave an altar call, and I was the first one up there. But this man started prophesying over me. And the more he prophesied, the matter I got. And I figured, well, there's a 48-hour clause. If you just get saved, you can beat a preacher up in 48 hours, they say. Ah. I don't know. I made that up. But anyways, I figured, you know, I'm going to beat this guy after church. So I went outside and waited on him because he started telling me that I was going to Africa. He started telling me I was going to be in a war. He started prophesying all these things to me that wow. I didn't want to do. So uh, he come out of the church, and I started giving him some choice words. And I mean, I'm really on this guy. And all he said was, we'll see. 
1998, I found myself in Sudan, Africa, in the middle of a war. So everything he prophesied that night, six years later, came Well, I'm true. glad you didn't beat him up no. or shoot him with a machine gun. Well, and the thing about it is, even though, I mean, that's kind of like everybody's nightmare to think they get saved and God's going to call them to Africa, but the truth of the matter is... Oh, that used to be the joke when I was in college. Yeah, yeah. Huh. But, yeah. But the truth of the matter is that when you set foot into Africa, into Sudan, that's where your heart was. Absolutely. And that's yeah. what your calling was, yeah. and that's what your vision was, and that's what your purpose was. Absolutely. And what happened when you felt all of that destiny coming right in front of you like you that? Know, you could go into this region. Tell us a little bit about how dangerous that it is, and that's why you do have to well, carry machine a, guns. Well, in a and, sense, <laughs> your past prepared you absolutely to be able to handle this I, rough tub dangerous situation you know, this is in a sense a religious civil war of absolutely. muslims versus absolutely. christians kind Abs of like some video let's go now to darfur sudan africa you know, i tell people all the time a lot of people says i gave my heart to the lord god just don't want your heart he wants all of you yes, yes. he wants all of you everything he wants your past he wants everything and if you truly give him everything, he'll find a place for you. And I believe God looked down at me and said, wow, this guy's messed up, man. What am I going to do with him? Well, he put me in a war. And uh, I'm happy there. Uh, we have rescued over 1,000 children right now from the war. Wow. All right, we're seeing some pictures. We're going to do a roll in a moment. Tell us about what we're seeing here, Sam. Uh, this is actually on the front lines down inside of like bomb shelters and stuff in the front lines. And this area here was a heavy act, uh, active area. This was a bus that was ambushed by the LRA. I've been ambushed over 10 times now. All right, by the LRA. LRA. The Lord what Resistant Army. But see, the big problem is in Sudan. A lot they're not of people, really working for the Lord, are they? No, no, they're the Lord Resistant Army. But a lot of people want to say these little rebel groups are the problem. They're not the problem. It's the president of Northern Sudan, Bashir. Bashir is the problem. Bashir has had war crime charges put against him. They have tried to kill me many times because I speak out. I'm not afraid to speak out on TV or wherever I'm at. This man is a problem. He has caused a genocide in, inside of Darfur. Uh, he has caused a genocide inside of South Sudan. Right mm -hmm. now, January 9th, they will be in voting where they're voting for either freedom or the country to run under Arabic law. As Christians, we need to be praying wow. very hard that this country is going to be separated from the south to the north. More than that, we need to be praying that Bashir is taken out of office. This man has literally murdered hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, murdered them. So this is, in a sense, a religious civil war of Absolutely. Muslims versus Absolutely. Christians, kind Abs of like. Absolutely. Now, some, some, sometimes they'll call it a holy war. I mean, but, you know, in Darfur, it's Muslims fighting Muslims. But the one, the one Muslims in Darfur, the SLA, that's fighting, okay, the Janjaweed, they're fighting for freedom. And I love a Muslim that's fighting for freedom because they're easy to convert. You know, because there's only one freedom, and that's through Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we got some video. Let's go now to Darfur, Sudan, Africa. He would, he would get out there with the sinners. He loved the sinners. He wasn't ashamed or embarrassed to get out there and fellowship with them and love them and care for them. <clears throat> well, keep calling if you prayed that prayer. And uh, we've got Dr. Jeffrey Seif is here today, jo Joshua uh, Dufresne is here today with their uh, wonderful band. But here's a song entitled, Your Love Set Me Free. If we can pray with you in any way, go to the phone and call in Jesus' name.